Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to sculpt flame on swords. I mean, you could apply this to other objects, but it's going to have to look a little different when you're doing it. Just because when you're sculpting flame on a sword, it's kind of 2D. Because, you know, if you look along the blade edge, there's really no, like, proper shape. You're really just drawing with, with the green stuff. Um, for example, I've been working on this demon prince for a while here. Doing kind of like a rising from flame phoenix kind of look. And these are really twisted kind of like chaos -y flames that I did. And these are obviously way more different to sculpt than flat sword flames. But we can always do that in another video. I don't mind. Um, but yeah, so today we're going to be doing the blade, the hell blade, on this herald of corn that I made. I, I mainly like converting. Not much of a painter right now. Um, but yeah, converting, 100% my thing, so this is why, you know, I want to share how you make flames. It's just cool. So, all you need is some green stuff, a bladed sculpting tool, maybe one with a flat end as well, or just, you know, any other flat piece. Um, there's two ways you can prep the blade. Um, first of all, get your fingers really wet um, with the green stuff. I like to use a darker mix. Some people like using green you know, lighter green stuff mixes, but I, I tend to use more blue than I should just because the putty's a bit harder. Um, so it's easier to like sculpt on. Uh, with that being said, there's two ways you can prep the blade for flames. You can make tiny little balls. And what you would do is just put them on different parts of the opposite blade edge that you're cutting with. Um, you would put the balls there. Or you can make one long sausage piece. Um, but this one's a little bit harder for small weapons. If I was doing like a massive like axe or something on a character, probably just make a sausage. Um, if you look at the one I did earlier, you can kind of tell where I put a, go a gob of green stuff like here, here, and here, and here. Right, those are the main flames. Um, so this isn't one one whole piece. It's actually multiple tiny little little beads. Um, but yeah, so let's just get started by putting some beads on the blades first. And it might be a little quiet because I gotta focus. And make sure your fingers are wet. Like I said, make sure your fingers are wet because if any of these tiny beads stick on your fingers while you're sculpting them or on your tool uh, it's going to be really messy it's just a headache and I really don't like trying to remove green stuff when it's already on the plastic it's kind of annoying so like I said put the gob on the blade edge don't put it on the flat side because it's gonna it's gonna blend out um, as we sculpt Apply your gobs where you think you'd like big pieces of flame. It doesn't really matter where, honestly, artistically speaking, because I mean, fire is it's a pretty random element, so it's not like there's a correct way to sculpt it, anyways. It can look like anything. You just gotta paint it red and white and orange and yellow, like that's the honest truth. But having a good shape, you know, it matters. Um, so yeah, what we're doing now, wet fingers, we're going to smush it into the blade edge and then kind of smush it on each side here. And just pull it down a little bit. And this might be a good time to use a flat tool. Um, just to kind of flatten it into the metal of the blade so it starts looking like something um, but don't make it completely flat try to like draw ripples like waves into it because fire is kind of it's kind of like water where it ripples and it waves 
the way it looks. Um, which is funny because they're opposites. But they're the same. I'd probably sculpt the water the same. Just pulling down, adding some ripples. You can pull it a little. You don't have to be too gentle with it, but you want to be slow. You want to draw it, like I said. So if I'm a little slow this tutorial, it's meaningful. Okay. With the bladed edge, kind of try to define it more. Maybe pull some some little tails. Let's try to get it focused. Can I get it focused? Try to pull some little tails down. Pull some up, you know, because it's supposed to look natural. It can't look uniform. Fire should never look uniform. It looks wonky if it's uniform. And you know what? Pull some material off. Show some of that blade. Um, same thing with the other side here. Try not to ruin your work with your fingers on different sides. And again, just kind of pulling the green stuff. I got a notification. That was me, not you. All right. Come on, buddy. Okay. So now that we've started making our ripples, um, this is the fun part. So what you got to do here Get your fingers wet, and all you have to really do is pull, start pulling, pulling little tips, little tails for the flames here. And like I said, it can be wild. There we go. And if you look really closely now, those incisions we made in the green stuff start kind of making it look like you know, the bait. Sorry about that. I had to cut for a sec. Um, so yeah, so now that we have um, our beads pulled and we've kind of pinched the green stuff into flame tails, we start getting the shape of the flame. And you can add more flame or less flame. It, you know, it's, it's up to your personal taste. Um, from here, you know, you can almost sell it as flame already. Um, this particular piece I did, you know, I took a while, maybe like 15 minutes on this one. Um, but yeah, the last part really, with some clippers, is just cut into the, into the tails you've already made, and kind of just pull them a little, you know, remove some of them, remove some of the excess, make them a little smaller. Maybe spread them out a little. Make smaller tails, because it doesn't have to be one big flame. You know, it could be a bunch of tiny small ones. Just kind of pull it here. If anything, kind of trim it when it's on the blade edge here, because then it'll look a bit more. Aerodynamic, fire dynamic. I don't know. At this point, you're just really trimming, to be quite honest. And like I said, um, at any point, this could literally sell as as fire. You just gotta paint it. It's a quick and dirty way to do flame. And one thing that might be beneficial to do, if you see on my on my really good one. I kind of cone them out, give them a bit of a 3D shape, which you can do. Let's do it on this, this one, just for the sake of knowing how to do it. So what you'd want to do is you want to grab it right around the middle here, push it to one end, and pull the tip towards the other end, and try to make different like S shapes, right? And then that kind of gives it a bit more life. Makes the flames look more alive. This one here is a little ugly. I'm gonna tuck that guy away. Like I said, just trust the process. The more you do this, the easier it'll look. I mean, the easier it'll be to do, but. 
I'm just trying to make sure it's focuses on the camera. Jeez. I'm using a mix of techniques here. And there we have it. Got some flames. One thing I'd like to mention is if you find your flames are a little thin, just repeat the process, wait for the green stuff to dry or do it while it's still wet, doesn't matter. Just add more beads and eventually you'll be adding really nice thick layers of flame onto your blade and everything will be great. There we go. Cheers.